Welcome to Lowe's Motor Speedway and welcome to the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series North Carolina Education Lottery 200 on speed. Concord, North Carolina, the side of race number six for the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series. And let's hear from Colin Brown. He had his uh, truck in the top five, a top six in practice. You happy with what you got? Well, I think so. You know, uh, I think our truck's going to be really good here for tonight. We really worked on getting it to drive well and, and race trim. Did a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of three or four or five lap runs. Only made one mock run there at the end of practice. Um, so I feel like we're really focusing on our, on our race package. Went out there, tried to run with some other trucks and things like that, just to try and get our number six Conway Freight Ford F-150 truck driving well in traffic. I think that's going to be important tonight. What are you expecting in qualifying? You know, I hope if we can put it inside the top 10, that would be a good thing for us. Uh, it, it seems to be kind of the way that this whole team works. Whenever they qualify, even with Travis Qualifler or Mark Martin back in the past, you know, they'd always qualify somewhere inside the top 10, and the first 25 laps, they'd be up at the front. So hopefully we can do the same thing. All right, we wish you good luck. You know, Roush Racing, Roush Fenway Racing, that is, has been stuck on 49 victories for a long time. You need to get number 50 for Colin Brown. Welcome back to Lowe's Motor Speedway qualifying, continuing the North Carolina Education Lottery 200, which will be run later this evening. Colin Brown, third quick in his qualifying effort, 30.397 on lap number one. Yeah, we talked to him earlier. A top 10 was what he was hoping for. He's going to get that top 10 and some. Truck looked really good on the racetrack. Thanks for a good truck, man. Yeah, hearing thanks for a good so truck. It's so much fun tonight. F4, good job. He liked the way that thing handled during his qualifying run, and it looked like it looked really, really nice. Sporty. Down low in the in the turns, not not a whole lot going on. That's what you hope for as a driver that you can put your foot on the floor. Uh, like Kyle Busch said, just put your foot on the floor and guide. That's the goal. <laughs> it doesn't usually work that way, but that's the goal. Third, the good news, Rick. The bad news is if we don't resume qualifying and get it done to completion, that means you'd start 17th. So I, I know what you think about this nasty weather. Yeah, I'm not really liking it right here right now. Uh, you know, I certainly hope they can get qualifying resumed. And, you know, I think that third place time is at least keep us in the top, you know, six or seven there, I think. So hopefully that can stand up. And, uh, you know, all these guys worked really hard on this truck. It was the same truck we ran at Kansas. They came back, worked on it, got it driving really good here at Charlotte. So hopefully we get this uh, back underway. Now Colin wants to win tonight, no doubt about it. But you may see just over his shoulder here the TRG Motorsports logo on the truck. He wouldn't mind them winning this weekend, just not tonight. Tell us why. Absolutely not tonight. Um, you know, my dad actually works for the TRG Porsche team. That they're racing the Grand Am Series in the GT class out there in Laguna Seca. So it'd be cool to see him win on Sunday, but hopefully you know, our number six Conway Freight Ford F-150 will be in victory lane tonight. All right, we'll see if uh, Colin can get it done and become the third first-time winner here at the Lowe's Motor Speedway. Over now to Ray Dunlap. Look at Colin Brown. He's doing the same thing to McCombie up on the outside and around he goes for he's, the lead. Yep, he's going to take the lead. Yours. Colin five, Brown four, now is our leader, and there goes Ron Hornaday. He takes the spot away, moves up into the fourth position. Tabo Dine right there running along in the fifth position. New sponsor on board, Copart. The Conway Freight number six out in front now. We can't forget it's Colin Brown that's actually the leader of this race, but ever so close to him is the 33 of Ron Hornaday. He has been like a hawk going after Colin Brown all over the back bumper of him to try to take the lead away. Mike Beam watching his driver lead at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Could Colin Brown be another first-time winner in the truck series here at Lowe's? There he is right there in the Conway and, Ford. And every lap, he's the fastest truck. He's the fastest truck, but don't think that the guys that put tires on that first time around are, aren't realizing that, too. Now they're saying, okay, we need fuel, but maybe we don't have to come in for that second stop for tires, but we know Colin Brown will more than likely have to get tires and fuels next time around, so he may lose some of this track position. I just hope that right front tire doesn't wear out. That's, a, that's asking an awful lot out of, that, out of that right front Goodyear tire with the speeds they're running and as many laps that are on it. Kim Lopez, the flag woman, just showed us the halfway sign with the flags. We've passed the halfway. The Conway Freight number six of Colin Brown has led the most laps he's ever led in the truck series at 23.
And when we go back to the front of the field, Adam, with the number six truck, the Conway Bunch, remember, they pitted on lap 26 for fuel only. Now, Mike Beam just came on the radio talking with Colin, and he told him lap 90 is what we have circled right here that we would have to pit if it stays green. Now, they would come for fuel only again if it goes green, but they're hoping it doesn't make it that way. We're going to lap 79 right now. We're hearing that the six truck is looking to come in on lap 89, so we're within seven laps of that happening. We could have other teams coming in earlier than that. We're inside that window now that we talked about earlier. We see Kyle Busch now has chased down and caught Colin Brown. We're going to have some penalties. We're going to have some guys yeah. that are going to be speeding yep. on pit road. And who will that take out of contention for this race? The leaders are coming up on traffic. Like we said, Kyle Busch has been able to go high and go low. He de decides to go low there as Colin Brown decides how to deal with the 23 of Jason White. Jason White all the way up against the wall, almost blocking Colin Brown, so he has to move to the bottom of the racetrack. I'd say that was more than almost blocked. Yeah, I'd say pretty much was a legitimate block there. <laughs> not, not intentional, but nonetheless no. a block. Right. Well, and he's on the lead lap. You know, he, he had the line. He just took the line and it was able to... As it works out for Colin Brown, he Colin was able to put a truck between he and Kyle Busch because of what Jason did. Now two trucks between them. So Colin did a nice job handling traffic right there. Dives down to the bottom of the racetrack. And Colin has been one of the trucks that has been consistently running the bottom and running extremely fast laps. Problems on the racetrack. The Colin Brown is going to come Into the out. wall. The 16 of Brian Scott as well. Colin Brown continuing to careen off the inside wall. He was your race leader, I have no and it looks as though he has problems, gets sent to the outside wall, and that brings our third caution out of the night. And what a horrible break for Ryan Newman and Ron Hornaday and David Gilliland. All on pit road, and there you see Cat in the Hat, Jack Roush. What happened there, bud? I just got turned, man. I just... He, we heard Colin Brown say, I have no idea what I did wrong there. We'll have to check it on replay. I have no idea what he did wrong either. We've always got a camera that follows the race leader. Here's a look from up above. Trying to get around the 16. It looks like he's moving to the inside. And oh, that's Kyle Busch. Got into the back of him. He didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, Kyle Busch absolutely got into the rear of that truck and turned him into the outside wall and then Colin came down and careened into the inside while Brian Scott was an innocent victim there as well. I mean, Kyle just thought that he was going to get in behind the six, and he, he totally ran into the right rear quarter of him and crashed him. What a horrible break for Colin Brown. Here's Kyle Bush. He's trying to go around the outside. Colin Brown stays to the inside to move by Brian Scott. You see his nose on the inside of the 16 truck, so there's no way that Colin was up too high. No. And Kyle just ran into his right rear corner, turned him into the wall. And you know, Colin Brown was so frustrated there. He's had a tough season, and he was doing everything perfectly. Take another look at this, Phil. The six of Colin Brown is going to pull to the inside of Brian no, Scott. You see Kyle with a, with a run right there, and he just moves to the inside just enough to clip that right rear corner. I think he was thought he was just going to fall in behind Colin Brown and, and maybe draft, misjudged it a little bit. Draft him past the 16, and he just he ran into the poor kid and crashed him. I mean, I think absolutely no malicious intent right there. He was just going to try to follow Colin Brown, and and it looks like he just misjudged it a little bit. NASCAR has said. Kyle Busch, you need to go to the back of the line. They're calling it rough driving, and so Kyle Busch will go to the back of the longest line to restart this race. Let's hear from Colin. Well, he is out of the infield care center. That's the good news. The truck looks pretty used up. Your thoughts about what happened on the racetrack? Well, you know, it's just disappointing, I guess, is the best way to put it. All these guys on my team put so much work into these uh, these trucks. I mean, all the hours back at the shop to get this truck ready to come race here, and, uh, you know, it's disappointing that something like that happens but uh you know i guess that's part of racing and, and uh we'll go on from there and we got another spin on the racetrack so the yellow is out that's the 10 of james busher has come around another tough break for colin brown seems like they just can't buy any luck over here with the six truck just um and then the, the six and the 16 i was rolling down the back and was rolling out of the throttle and the thing veered to the left a little bit that was my fault so um you know just an error on my part just gonna let those guys battle it out into turn three and I knew he had to pit in a few laps, so it wasn't going to be worth my while to take the lead from him. He was going to have to come to pit road for fuel. So, um, 